Today, let's delve into the Citroën 12B engine, an engineering marvel. We'll discuss its academic significance and unique features. Best of all, we'll compare it to its main German competitor to see who comes out on top. Shall we embark on this journey together? Historical Automotive Innovations In 1949, the 12B model stood out in the automotive world. Its engine boasted 375 cubic centimeters, consisting of 12 boxer cylinders. These cylinders, made from an aluminum alloy, were finned for better cooling. The cooling system featured an axial fan directly connected to the crankshaft. This model had a compression ratio of 6 to 1. With a balance between bore and stroke, it achieved over 3,500 revolutions per minute, generating 9 horsepower. Despite modest torque of 20 newton meters, it was sufficient to propel a 500 kilogram car. In contrast, the 1950 Beetle, its competitor at the time, had twice as many cylinders. With 1,131 cubic centimeters and a compression ratio of 5.6 to 1, it produced 25 horsepower at 3,300 revolutions. However, the Citroën had the upper hand in power per cubic centimeter, albeit by a narrow margin. The Beetle used a simple and classic gear-driven oil pump. Meanwhile, the 12B employed a more advanced G-rotor pump. This pump featured a four-tooth central rotor connected to the camshaft and a five-tooth outer rotor. This created a variable volume, resulting in positive displacement. Compared to the gear pump, the G-rotor was quieter, less vibratory, and efficient. However, the gear pump still had the advantage of simplicity and cost. Both pumps were easy to repair, consisting of only two moving parts. The lubrication process began with oil absorption by the pickup in the sump. The oil rose through a duct to the pump, from where it was distributed under pressure through the camshaft and the crankshaft's veins. Some models included veins in the connecting rods. Copper tubes carried the oil to the valve rockers. The oil radiator, made of aluminum, was located behind the fan, not obstructing the cylinders. In the Beetle, cylinder number 3 had delayed spark timing to compensate for excess heat and prevent detonation. The Beetle had a centrifugal fan, reliant on a large duct that redirected air to the cylinders. This design caused efficiency loss due to the change in air direction. The 12B, with its axial fan, promoted direct and efficient airflow. There were no chains or belts in the engine, as gears reliably and durably ensured synchronization. The camshaft controlled the valves through adjustable rods and rockers. Angled valves optimized airflow, not colliding with the cylinder walls. The hemispherical combustion chamber improved efficiency. The strategically positioned exhaust valve allowed the fan's air to cool the engine's hottest part, distributing heat evenly. Evolution of Classic Engines once upon a time, in a not-so-distant era, a common practice in engine engineering revolutionized our understanding of combustion. This technique involved heating the intake air to prevent fuel droplets from condensing. Thus, the fuel entered the cylinder in a gaseous state, mixing more efficiently with the air. This process resulted in superior combustion quality. Interestingly, the vehicle's exhaust pipes played a crucial role in this process, as they passed through the carburetor to heat it. It was an ingenious method, especially considering that technologies like electronic injection did not yet exist. The internal structure of engines from that era also featured remarkable characteristics. The combustion chamber, for example, was hemispherically modeled. Complementing this innovation, there was a specially designed piston with a cup that maximized valve opening. Additionally, it had side lobes, a feature designed to not lose compression which could be caused by the well in the center of the piston. In contrast, the Beetle, an automotive icon of the era, had a different approach to its engine design. Its cylinder head, or head, had straight valves. This configuration made it more economical and easier to build. However, this simplification resulted in a slight reduction in air intake. The Beetle's combustion chamber had a unique design known as inverted bathtub. This shape was not only more economical to produce but also reduced detonation, a common problem in engines of the time. Moreover, the cylinders of these old engines were designed to be easily removable. 
This meant that, when damaged, it was simply a matter of taking the cylinders to a specialized shop for a quick replacement with already machined parts equipped with new pistons. This maintenance system was remarkably efficient, significantly reducing the vehicle's downtime. Another interesting aspect was the construction of the connecting rods, which were made as a single piece. They had no cap or screws, as was common in other models. This simplified design contrasted with the more complex practices adopted in later periods. The 12B model engine, an exemplar of engineering of that era, had a quite peculiar feature in its crankshaft. It could be completely disassembled for the insertion of the connecting rods. This functionality made the process of turning the crank pins, the smaller parts of the crankshaft, extremely easy. It was possible to carry out this work on a small lathe. However, there's a point to consider about the 12B's disassemblable crankshaft, despite its practicality, this feature slightly compromised the component's strength. This could be a disadvantage in situations requiring greater engine robustness. Nonetheless, considering that the small 375 cubic centimeter engine of the 12B produced only 9 horsepower and its top speed was limited to 70 km per hour, the reduced strength of the crankshaft did not pose a significant problem. Interestingly, the 12B did not use a conventional distributor to manage ignition. Instead, spark jumping was controlled by a rotor with centrifugal advances installed on the camshaft at the front of the engine. This system ensured that, whenever the piston reached the top dead center, the coil fired a spark. Interestingly, this happened in both cylinders, regardless of whether it was the correct moment for ignition. Although this approach was innovative, it resulted in double the wear on the spark plugs. This, in turn, half the lifespan of these components. This design choice was a cost-saving measure, avoiding the need for a more conventional distributor. This ignition system was known as Wasted Spark. The first models of this engine were equipped with a 6-volt generator. Over time, this setup was upgraded to a 12-volt alternator, keeping up with the technological evolutions of the time. Another notable component was the flywheel. It was disproportionately large and heavy. This feature was essential to keep the engine running, especially considering that, with only two cylinders, there was a single combustion per crankshaft revolution during the compression and exhaust cycle of each cylinder. There was no additional impulse to keep the engine running, only inertia was responsible for maintaining rotation. This made the engine lose agility, especially in situations requiring faster accelerations. In contrast, the Beetle, with its four-cylinder engine, had a different dynamic. There was always a cylinder in the expansion phase, constantly propelling the engine. This feature gave our beloved Beetle an advantage in terms of response and agility. Another interesting point is that it was possible to start the engine using a crank, the same one used to change the wheels, in case the battery was discharged. At the top of the engine was the carburetor, as well as the oil inlet. The latter also functioned as a ventilation filter or breather for the engine. This was a crucial functionality, as when the pistons moved into the crankcase, the volume inside it decreased. The generated pressure needed to be released somehow. Without this ventilation mechanism, the seals and gaskets of the different parts of the engine could burst due to excessive pressure, causing oil leaks. Over time, the engine underwent several modifications and improvements. Its size was increased to 425 cubic centimeters, reaching a power of 18 horsepower. Later, there was another expansion, this time to 602 cubic centimeters, raising the power to 28 horsepower. These enhancements allowed the vehicle to exceed 110 kilometers per hour. The design of the 12B was specifically thought for the rural roads of France, where conditions were often challenging. Its mechanical suspension, which used friction dampers, was notably simple. This simplicity was a great advantage, as it eliminated the concern with hydraulic fluid leaks common in more complex systems. Another curious aspect was the operation of the windshield wipers. They were connected to the speedometer cable. This meant that the faster the vehicle's speed, the faster the wipers moved. It was practically an automatic windshield cleaning system. The headlights of vehicles from that era also had an interesting feature. They could be adjusted from inside the vehicle through a cable. 
This allowed the driver to modify the angle of the headlights without having to leave the car, a welcome convenience, especially in adverse conditions or during the night. The Beetle, however, had a slightly different approach in its design. Although it also had good capacity for uneven terrain, it was more suited for the German Autobahns. Its top speed was higher than the 12B, as was its overall performance. Beyond the standard model, there were variants like the Beetle Safari. Citron, for its part, had its own version, called Mihari, of which many units were produced. The 12B van also stood out, becoming popular for transporting goods. A particularly notable version of the 12B was the Sahara. It distinguished itself by having four-wheel drive, thanks to the installation of a second engine in the rear. Additionally, it had two fuel tanks, one under each seat, one for each engine. Interestingly, all the controls of this model were duplicated. Moving the gearshift lever or pressing the accelerator, the driver was actually operating two engines simultaneously. This version could be easily identified by external features, such as the air outlet on the trunk door and the spare wheel position on the hood. In a specific marketing move for the Argentine market, in 1967, the 12B was renamed to 13B. This change aimed to highlight the model's evolution and improvements. However, in other countries, the vehicle continued to be known as the 12B. The production of the 12B continued for many years, ending only in 1991. During this long period of over 40 years, approximately 5 million units were sold. Although this number was significantly lower than the sales achieved by the Beetle or Ford models, it was enough to ensure the beloved 12 be a prominent place in automotive history. So, what do you think of these legendary engines? Comment below with your experience or opinion.